Hi, I'm Patrick Coles from Los Alamos National Lab. Uh, today I'll be talking about Barron Plateau issues and variational quantum classical algorithms. This is work done uh, together with Marco Cerizo, Akira Sone, Tyler Volkoff, and Lucas Shinsio. It's based on our paper called Cost Function Dependent Barron Plateaus in Shallow Quantum Neural Networks, which you can find here on the archive. So first I want to talk about variational quantum classical algorithms, or for short, variational quantum algorithms. Um, these algorithms optimize the parameters of a quantum neural network or an ansatz or a parameterized quantum circuit in order to minimize a cost function. And uh, it's widely believed to be, they're widely believed to be the best hope for obtaining near-term quantum advantage. And that's why they've been proposed for so many applications like quantum data compression, error correction, compiling, metrology, foundations, state diagnosis and sampling, fidelity estimation, dynamical simulation, factoring and, and linear systems. Um, but, uh, but you know, despite all these very promising applications, there's still very few uh, rigorous scaling results that are known for, for these algorithms. One of the few rigorous uh, results that is known um, is due to the Google group it's from this paper, Barron Plateaus in Quantum Neural Networks. And um, there they, they studied um, how the gradient uh, scales um, with the number of qubits. And they had both analytical and numerical results. Their analytical results include, um, uh, for example, the following. So they assume that the unitary uh, in the ansatz forms a two design. And under this assumption, they can derive that the variance has this prefactor, which decays exponentially in the number of qubits n. Um, and because the first moment uh, is, uh, is zero, then this implies that um, because the, now that the variance is exponentially vanishing, that means that the, uh, that the gradient is exponentially concentrating around zero. They also have numerical results. So they had a simple 1D layered ansatz like this. And the numeric results um, supported their analytical results and showed that uh, for deep circuits, as, as L increases, um, then you see that uh, as you increase the number of qubits, just going down vertically here, um, then the variance of the gradient is going down exponentially. Of course, that, that doesn't hold for shallow circuits here, but as long as the circuit is deep, and hence the unitaries approximate a two design, then you see this exponential decay of the variance. Uh, now their results were for deep circuits, and hence a natural question is, can we extend the Barron Plateau phenomenon to shallow circuits? And that's part of the motivation for our work and indeed, we provide an answer in our work, yes, provided that we allow this phenomenon to depend on the cost function. And I want to first give a simple example of how the Barron Plateau phenomenon might depend on the cost function. And the simple example is just going to be trying to learn the identity gate. So imagine that your goal is to prepare the all zero state from the all zero state. It's a very simple example, obviously, but uh, we can see already the Barron Plateau phenomenon for this example. So if I, a very natural cost function would just be to penalize you for being orthogonal to the zero state. So you just construct this projector that's orthogonal to the zero state, and then your cost is just the overlap with that projector. And this is the landscape for that cost function. This is a two-dimensional cross-section of the landscape. And from this, uh, from this plot, we see two phenomena actually. We see the Barron Plateau phenomenon, which is that this part of the landscape is, is flat. Um, but then we also see something that we call the narrow gorge phenomenon, which is that the valley that contains the global minimum is narrow. Um, and in, in these two different curves, the blue curve and the orange curve, correspond to two different values of n, the number of qubits. So I'm increasing the number of qubits here. And you can see as we increase the number of qubits, that, that valley uh, shrinks and, and it turns out you can show that it shrinks exponentially. In contrast, if you have a, a local cost function that simply penalizes you for being orthogonal to the zero state locally on each individual qubit and then sums up the contributions, then the two-dimensional cross function is actually invariant uh, to the uh, uh, with the number of qubits and looks like this. And you can see there's, there's no Barron Plateau and there's no narrow gorge phenomenon. And these black points, by the way, correspond to randomly uh, picking points. And you can see that if you randomly pick points, um, here, many points are in, the, are in the valley. 
whereas here, very few points are in the valley containing the global minimum. So that's a simple example. And then our overall uh, general results can be summarized as follows. So once again, uh, this, this region corresponds to the McLean et al. paper. They showed that you have a barren plateau whenever the depth of your circuit, if you have a hardware efficient onsatz, is, is order poly n. And that holds regardless of whether you have a global cost function or local cost function. Um, and our work is to study the shallow circuit regime. And we can show that the barren plateau phenomenon for global cost functions carries all the way through even if you have constant depth circuits, O1 depth. So regardless if you have O1, O log n, O poly log n, you have a barren plateau if you have a global cost function. Um, on the other hand, if you have a local cost function, we can prove um, that the cost function is trainable provided the circuit depth is O log n, namely the, 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 uh, the gradient only vanishes uh, polynomial length with n. And then there's a transition region where it uh, is neither polynomial nor exponential. Um, and then finally, you have at O poly n, the barren plateau phenomenon again. So that summarizes our main results. And uh, this is um, also, I'll go into more detail in our theorems. We basically, uh, for a global cost function, we prove an upper bound on the variance of the gradient. Um, and that it, it's upper bounded by a function. And that function uh, we can show is, uh, is exponentially vanishing in the number of qubits. Um, and uh, I just want to emphasize that we, we have this sort of form for a uh, observable um, that defines a global cost where each O sub i um, here, O sub ij here is, is, is uh, some, for example, like a non-trivial poly operator. So we have two formulations. One is whenever these are projectors and another one is whenever they're, they're poly operators. Um, but as long as you have this sort of formulation where your sort of target observable is um, a tensor product of non-trivial operators here, then this is what we call a global cost function. Um, on the other hand, for the local cost functions, um, which are described by local observables like this, uh, where these are, say, uh, for example, like um, two-body operators, um, then we prove a lower bound on the variance. And then we show that the, low, the function, this function, which is a lower bound on the variance, um, is, is, polynomial, is at worst polynomially vanishing in the number of qubits. So those are our two main results. Um, and, uh, and then finally, what we do is we illustrate these, uh, these analytical results with a very important uh, practical application known as quantum autoencoders. So this application was first introduced by pioneering work by Romero et al. And they, it attempts to compress an ensemble of quantum states on um, Na plus Nb qubits down to Na qubits. Uh, for our numerics, we chose this simple hardware efficient onsatz. Um, even though these, uh, yeah, so, so I will mention that our, our theorems are assume that the blocks and the onsatz form local two designs. So just to go back here, these blocks here form local two designs. Um, and that corresponds to, um, say, this block, even though it's not a true two design, um, it's some sort of approximate two design. Um, and then we consider, um, so, so we assume that uh, we're just compressing down to a single qubit and we're throwing away all these qubits here. Um, you can formulate a global cost function, which is the originally proposed co cost function. Um, alternatively, you can formulate a local cost function, which is the cost function that we propose to use. Um, and sure enough, we find very different scaling behavior whenever you use a global cost function and a local cost function. Uh, these are the results of our numerics. As one can see, um, the, the, both cost functions train fairly well as long as the number of qubits that you're throwing away is less than about 20 qubits. Both cost functions are able to train. But as soon as the number of qubits that you're throwing away gets uh, more than 20 qubits, then the global fu cost function no longer trains. So it's completely flat here, completely flat. And uh, we go all the way up to 100 qubits. And, and that behavior stays true. On, in contrast, the local cost function, which is the blue curve here, trains um, essentially independently of n all the way up to 100 qubits, which is as large as, as, large as we went. So 
Um, so if you use a local cost instead of a global cost, then uh, this seems to work. And I want to mention that the local cost is a faithful cost function, so it vanishes under the same conditions. So in a sense, what you can do is vanishes under the same conditions as a global cost. So what you can do is basically indirectly train the global cost by directly training the local cost. So in conclusion, uh, rigorous scaling results are urgently needed for variational quantum algorithms because these algorithms might provide quantum advantage. And we provided two such results, assuming a hardware efficient onsatz. Um, the first result being that global cost functions have barren plateaus for essentially all circuit depths, whereas local cost functions have large gradients provided the circuit depth is order log n. Our results can be viewed as an extension of the Google Group's uh, barren plateau result to shallow circuits. Um, our results establish a connection between locality and trainability. And a novel, exciting aspect of our work is that uh, we, we provide a non-trivial lower bound on gradients guaranteeing trainability. So um, hopefully moving forward, researchers can use our tools, perhaps maybe to ga guarantee trainability for other kinds of onsauces um, besides the onsauce that we use in this work. So thank you very much.